He kōna e pūrangi tēnei nā te reo irirangi o Aotearoa. Ah, the familiar soundtrack of one of New Zealand's most popular soap operas. Shortland Street was launched on New Zealand screens on the 25th of May 1992, and today it's the longest running soap opera and New Zealand's most watched programme. But what was there before Shortland Street? Or short as most people know it. Well, there was a long running TV series called Gloss, but that had been cancelled two years before Shortland Street, and in fact, Kiwi viewers were glued to shows from across the ditch. Neighbours and Home and Away were popular here, and it seemed nothing else could quench our viewing thirst quite like the way Aussie shows did. Well, that is, until our very own Shortland Street, a soap opera set in a hospital, materialised on our screens. While it took some getting used to, Kiwi audiences were soon hooked on the show five days a week for half an hour each night. It was a show with identifiable characters who were, well, almost like us, along with handsome doctors, cute nurses, annoying neighbours, controversial office relationships, chaotic family lives and storylines that were much in line with issues of the day. It was current, addictive, and made for entertaining dinnertime viewing, with plenty of hooks and drama to keep us all hanging on, and sometimes on the edge of our seats. It provided the foundation for actors to learn the tricks of the fast turnaround TV trade where many became household names and honed their craft. And there have been a few non-Pākehā actors on the show from time to time too. But does it mean it reflected the multicultural makeup of New Zealand or even Auckland, where it was set? Kia ora, I'm your host and producer Sonia Yee and that's what this episode of Eyewitness is all about. Specifically, the moment an Asian face, namely Dr. Grace Kwan, stepped onto the scene. We haven't even had a proper date yet. Well, it's probably just as well. Now I'd like you to go, please. What's happened? I've been given some insights into your personality. Dr. Grace Kwan arrived on the show two years after its inception in 1994. A doctor of Chinese descent who was vivacious, feisty, the kind of character you either loved or hated or simply loved to hate. We've got one Chinese character, we've got one gay character, we've got one Maori character, or we'll have two Maori characters. Simon Morris, RNZ producer and host of Matinee Idol, was among the first table of writers on Shortland Street. He worked on the show for about five years, but even Simon says the show back then wasn't truly representational of what New Zealand really looked like. I'm sure that the point of the exercise was just to have something happening, and the more variety you could have within the cast of something like that, the better. I don't think it was considered to be a thing where you, where people, at that stage at any rate, said, we must have more Maori characters and we must have more, uh, something that's more reflective of what's going on in the politics or the social politics of the, of the country. Frankly, what they wanted to do was just crack the whip and have another plot go through. When you read that there was an Asian character coming onto the scene. Was it something that it was like, oh my God, there's an Asian character that's... I mean, no more than when they said, we're going to have the most glamorous blonde woman on there who's not a bimbo. So do you then feel that you contributed to carving that character out as simply human? Well, I think so. I think that in a way you make your own character too, as far as the actors are concerned. It is a bit of a sausage factory. And there comes a time when you think, well, here are our core characters, but they can't just keep interacting with each other. We need more people coming in. And you never know which one is going to work. Do you think part of it was about attracting an Asian audience to Shortland Street? I think they certainly didn't think it would do any harm. I don't think it was a deliberate thing where they said, my goodness, we must get more Asian people in there. I have an idea. Why don't we have an Asian character? Perhaps somebody went to a hospital, had a look around and said, well, how come your hospital doesn't look anything like our hospital? Let's do something about it. (laughs) Obviously, today we sort of live in a different environment where everybody's sort of tiptoeing around the edges, afraid to say the wrong thing. Do Mm. Do you think that it's harder for script writers to be writing for characters like Grace Kwan, do you think they'd be more hyper aware of we can't cross certain territory because we have to be culturally sensitive? I think so. I I think it's a shame. I mean, back then, the reason why it got diverse is because I'm sure producers wanted to see 
a wider range of people in there. They wanted older people. They wanted younger people. Now it's almost like a box ticking exercise. And having ticked the box, we have got an ex-Iranian person here. We've got a Korean person here. We've got somebody who's in a, in a wheelchair or something like that. I adored Grace Kwan. Did you see her as being a kind of like a cultural stereotype? She's described as a hardworking Asian doctor. Not really. I mean, she was a lot more Auckland than that than that, I thought. When you were writing dialogue for her, was her the fact that she was Asian ever at the forefront of your mind as you're kind of crafting out this character? Absolutely not. I, I think that I would have been really nervous about doing that. But if I was writing something for her, I would be writing something for a 20-something-year-old New Zealand woman. She just happened to be Asian. She, and I mean, Asian looking <laughs> is what she was. And in the case of Dr. Grace, it was handy for them to have it so that at least she didn't look like any of the other characters at that stage. And then as soon as she opened her mouth and she wasn't, you know, this exotic Asian dragon lady, she was one of the girls. You Although know. she was pretty fiery. But what which to me kind of then conforms again to that kind of the stereotype. That's a good point. The fact that she did fly again in a sense, against certain stereotypes. That is, at that stage, I think, maybe people thought of Asian women as being quiet and self-deprecating and not pushing themselves around and things like that. And I'm certain that that was deliberate from the point of view of the producers. I spoke to actor Lynette Forday, who played Dr Grace Kwan via the Auckland studio. We talked about what it meant to play an Asian character in New Zealand and the weight of expectation. They said they couldn't find anyone in New Zealand, so they um, went to Australia. I do remember picking up the script, and I do remember watching some takes that they sent me of Shortland Street. I couldn't understand the accent, if I'm brutally honest. Lynette played Dr Grace Kwan between 1994 and 1997. She was a 28-year-old graduate of the prestigious National Institute of Dramatic Art, or NIDA for short. But what was new at the time is that this character didn't conform heavily to a very strict stereotype. She was such a well-rounded character. She wasn't just a hard-working, you know, wanting to get to the top woman. She was fun, loved shopping, she loved food, she loved the Thunderbirds. She was very three-dimensional. I mean, that must have felt like a bit of a revelation in a way. Like, that's quite liberating for an actor. I was a very naive young actor and didn't see it as anything special. But, of course, now when I look back, I think, my goodness, what amazing trailblazers. But they really were back then. You know, to have a character that wasn't cooking, standing at a wok or part of the triad or anything ridiculous or a prostitute. <laughs> These are all the characters that I have auditioned for many, many times over. I mean, stereotypically, I was a doctor, you know, and there's lots of Asian doctors. I loved that it was multicultural looking. Very early in my career, the thought of different colours on screen hadn't even crossed my mind that that was an issue. I didn't imagine that the colour of my skin would ever be an issue. But part of that is also that growing up in Australia, Lynette was exposed to channels like SBS, which was... A very multicultural channel. And we also have the ABC, which has always been committed to a broad spectrum of people. So I never realised how difficult it was for a face of colour to, to be mainstream. But that wasn't to say that Asian faces were mainstream in Australia either. Lynette says they definitely weren't. But once her face became part of mainstream TV here in New Zealand, it was then that she began to understand that being Asian, or different, was actually a thing, and not necessarily in a good way. And journalists were pretty open about expressing how they felt about it too. The very earliest bit of prejudice that I received um, was from another journalist who is a very well-known journalist here in New Zealand. I may have only been on the show for a couple of weeks on screen, seeing the um, weekend newspaper, and on the cover it said, Grace Kwan must go. And then there was a picture of me. <laughs> it was a little lead saying, turn to page such and such, Grace Kwan is horrendous. How did you feel about that? Oh, my God, I was a young, inexperienced, vulnerable actor. I was just devastated. And then I 
flicked further on, Asian invasion. You know, I took it, of course, very personally. I thought, oh, my God, it's me, my acting. Dr Grace Kwan is stepping down from a surgical team. The operation will now be performed by a renowned consultant surgeon, Ian Seymour. And as I read further, they were saying it was about the character. But, of course, the average person just reads the headlines. Horrible Grace Kwan must go. And that was my first attack. It was kind of akin to cyberbullying, and the impact stuck around long after the article was published. But it reminded me today of how soul-destroying it can be to a young person to um, read about themselves, how devastating it can be. These kinds of experiences said something about the time, reflecting how New Zealanders saw Lynette's point of difference, and in general, how the mainstream felt about people of colour. That was sort of the start of many years of me starting to understand how the media worked. Back then, Shortland Street, any new face on Shortland Street, made the cover of a magazine immediately. You know, all the women's magazines were uh, scampering after them to get them on the cover. And it was two years and no one came to me. And finally, the publicist said to me, oh, they said they couldn't put you on the cover because of your Asian face, you, you know, you turn away people. But you're finally popular enough to put you on the cover. That just broke my heart because all that time, those two years, I just thought I wasn't good enough. One of the most effective forms of racism with the media is to play on the psyche of a person of colour because you never know. You don't know why you don't get the part or why you, you know, weren't chosen for something and you always just put it down to it being yourself, not good enough. At the time, still in Auckland, you could probably go down Queen Street and see, I don't know, hundreds of Asian faces. Did you have conflicting feelings about that? Like, oh, I finally made the cover, but oh. Do you know, I responded as a young, foolish person in that I said, no, stuff them, I'm not doing it, because I was so angry when I found out. I did a cover for a fitness magazine. It became their best-selling you know, cover that they had. And I did that, but I refused to do the women's magazine. And, of course, now... In retrospect, that was so stupid of me because I should have done it and put my own feelings behind to actually get an Asian face on the cover. You talk about being kind of a, a young, naive actor and being one Asian face. At the time, did you think that one was enough? They pulled in Helene Wong as my mother, but that was all. I always thought one was enough. That was fine back then. At least we had one. But now, of course, we need families <laughs> to be on screen. Minus one is not enough. You're just going to walk away from your patient? I didn't walk. I was escorted. So talk to him. Negotiate. He is the one in the wrong here, not me. You see... Lynette played Dr Grace Kwan for three years, and in her words, the character's time was up when she left in 1997. But much to Lynette's surprise, Dr Grace Kwan was brought back 16 years later. TVNZ announced Dr Grace Kwan's return as the ninth best thing to happen in 2013 and she also won the Ferndale Talk Best of 2013 Awards for Favourite Character to Return. Now, despite the character's success, Dr Grace Kwan was also criticised for not being representative of Asian culture. I'm not representing a alien Asian, you know, who <laughs> yes. is different from everyone else. I'm representing a human being who has an Asian face who feels and thinks and does everything just like any other human. We do have different culture, of course. You know, for the last decade, I, I was watching American television and there was a stint where every show in their leads, you know, their core cast, would have an Asian face playing an American Asian. And I kept thinking, New Zealand's going to follow the way, New Zealand's going to follow the way, but they didn't and they haven't. I can't tell you how many times I've auditioned and got to the very end and it's gone to the European girl because they're not brave enough um, to cast the Asian face. These days, Lynette is still an auditioning and working actor, surviving what she says are the teenage years of motherhood and also works with young people to further their drama performance skills and has a particular interest in working with those from ethnic communities. You always turn so bloody-minded. Everything has to be a battle. It is called having a spine. It's called abandoning your patient for a petty principle. Do you feel like she made a difference? And, and if she did make a difference, what, what was that? I hope that she made a difference. We used to receive fan mail. Some young girls wrote to me and said that 
they saw themselves on screen, which was incredibly rewarding. I'm proud of the fact that people who wouldn't normally have warmed towards an Asian person would come up to me in the street and say, you're OK. But I still also feel like we have so far to go. I'm just going to leave this discussion. No, Tiffany, why don't you just leave, full stop? You want me to move out of the flat? Yes, I do. That was Lynette Forday, who played Dr Grace Kwan on Shortland Street. And you also heard our very own Simon Morris, who was a writer on the show at the time. And I'm your host and producer, Sonia Yee. If you'd like to listen to that episode or to listen to any previous episodes, you can head to rnz.co.nz forward slash eyewitness. You can also check that out on Spotify, Radio Public, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. 